welcome to my sewing room and do I ever have some magic for you today. I wonder how many of you really don't wear pants very often because the ones you buy at the store don't fit and the ones you make at home don't fit. Well, I'm one of those people and I'm telling you that right now I have on a pair of pants that really fit me for the first time probably in 20 years. Now, let me tell you another secret. The pants that I have on that really fit me took 12 minutes to make. Now, does that really sound like magic? Custom fitted pants in 12 minutes, that's what our show is about today. Let me share with you the elastic waist pants with the crotch that's the perfect length, the length that's the perfect length, perfect waist, perfect hips, and this pair of pants right here takes 12 minutes to make if you use the elastic waist. I will prove it to you too, I'm not just telling you that today. Here is another pair of these perfectly fitting pants with the elastic waist, and this is the style that takes only 12 minutes to make. Now, these are computer generated, putting my measurements, just typing them into a computer, and the pattern comes right out of a regular printer, and you tape them together, cut it out, and in 12 minutes you're gonna have a pair of pants. Now. This is another variation. You don't have to make the elastic waist. You can have a wonderful, wonderful zipper with the pleated front and the traditional waistline. Now this takes longer than 12 minutes to make. But once again, all I do is type my measurements in, the pattern comes out, and then they fit me perfectly. And people, that is so exciting. Here is another one of these good looking pants, the computer generated fit pants. And now then, not only do I have on a pair of pants that fits me perfectly for the first time in years, you can learn how to do it also. And remember, my elastic waist pants only take 12 minutes to make, and we're going to show you how to do it. I am so happy to have as my guest today, Dr. Lisa Shanley and Dr. Diane Tatara, who are co-owners of Wild Ginger Software, and they are the ones that have developed these wonderful patterns with clothes and pants that fit. Lisa and Diane, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for having us. Tell us what you've done and what it is <laughs> that makes these wonderful clothes. We've developed custom pattern making software where you take a set of body measurements, type it into the computer, choose the style options that you really want, Print out the patterns, tape them together, and sew your pants that fit. How about other clothes? Lots of other clothes. Lots of other clothes, Jackets, too. Jackets, right. blouses. Now, Diane, is this hard to do? Uh, do you have it's, to have special it's equipment? It's not hard at all. Any, any computer that uses Windows, you just put the CD in, and it, and it boots up by itself, and it gives you the little Next button to click to install the software, and it appears on the screen just like that. No problem at all. And what about a printer? Um, any kind of printer. Um, like you tell a regular it, printer? A regular printer. Mm -hmm. You tell it what size sheet of paper your printer is using, and the computer goes from there. It, it tiles the sheets of paper across the, the pattern and it gives you a full size pattern using regular size sheets of paper. Couldn't so be easier. Anyone, it, it really is mm -hmm. that easy. Really I know easier. it is, it really but is. I really didn't believe it. <laughs> now then, I, I want you to, can you just show um, our, our audience how you take those measurements? We can. And, we can. Be and what, how many measurements did you say? We take seven measurements for pants. For pants. Mm -hmm. right. And mine fit perfectly, mm -hmm. and you took my measurements we did. several weeks ago, mm -hmm. yes. and I put them on, the whole outfit, I, whole said, outfit. I could not mm -hmm. believe. All right, let's share with our television viewers exactly mm -hmm. how to take those measurements. We're ready. Now I'm going to show you how to take the measurements that you need to create your custom fit pair of pants. The first step is to mark the waistline correctly. We use a piece of elastic secured around the waist in the location where you like to wear your pair of pants. This can be worn up high at the true waistline or down lower depending on where you like your pants to ride. Once the waist tape is secured, we're going to take several sets of body measurements. We're going to take a set of vertical measurements which will define the bone structure of the body and then we'll take a set of horizontal measurements which will define the padding that's on the body. The first measurement that we take is the waist circumference. And that's taken around the elastic, directly on top of it, pulled taut but not too tight, and then you record that measurement. The next measurement that we'll take is the hip circumference. You'll stand to the side. The measuring tape is placed around the fullest part of the hip, and it's easiest to see that from the side of the body. Take and record that measurement. The third measurement that we take is the hip depth. This is going to determine how long the darts are on your custom fit pair of pants. 
measure from the bottom of the elastic, again, down to the fullest part of the hip. The next measurement that we'll take is the knee depth, down from the bottom of the elastic to the bend in the knee. The next measurement that we will take, if you'll face the front, is the center front length to floor. From the bottom of the elastic, stretch tight all the way down to the floor. And then turn to the back, please. And we take the center back length to floor. From the bottom of the elastic, again, down to the floor. The final measurement that we take is the crotch depth. You'll sit down. Then we measure from the bottom of the elastic to the base of the chair, over the fullest part of the hip. Okay, thank you. Record all of those measurements, then you're going to enter those into your software to begin to create your custom fit pair of pants. Now Diane's going to go off and change clothes, and I'm going to show you how these 12 minute pants are created. Lisa, would you please show me now how easy it is to make these wonderfully fitting pants with no side seam? It would be my okay. pleasure. <laughs> this is the pattern that we created from the measurements that we took from Diane a little while ago. As you can see, there is no side seam. What we've done is placed the straight of grain for the fabric down the side of the pant, and that's going to give us a pants pattern that will hang exceptionally well. We have an elastic waistband and a sewn-on waistband where the elastic will thread through. Now, Lisa, you drew this big pattern from just the little eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper that came out of That's my regular correct. computer. That's correct. I love it. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Here, I'll help you with this. All right. Here's the pants that we've cut out. And what you want to do first is leave them placed together, right sides together, just as they were cut out. The first step is to serge the front crotch seam. And this pair of pants can be made solely on the serger, which is the beauty of it. Once you have 12 minutes, the serger version or the machine version or either. Either. Oh, I love but it. But this doesn't require seam finishing once, you're, once you've sewn the pants, if you sew them on the serger. Once you've sewn the front crotch, you're going to take your waistband, fold it in half and press it. You're going to open up the pair of pants and sew the waistband around the top of it. Then thread your elastic through the waistband and then put your pants back together and sew the back crotch seam shut. Once that's been completed, you'll open the pants out, pin the inseam, and sew the whole inseam together. Serge your hem along the bottom, fold your hem up and press it, and then you'll just sew the hem down and you'll be finished. Well, that's absolutely amazing. It is. And the amazing thing is they really fit. They will fit. And there is no side seam, and you have done it, said it many, many times, yes, and 12 minutes is the most. You know what I'm really thinking, Lisa? All the hours people spend shopping for pants mm -hmm. that never fit, and they go home disgusted, right. upset, in tears, and this can be done sewing in 12 minutes. And I have never had a pair of pants that fit me like this in my life. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now we're going to send you to the sewing room <laughs> right? and ask Diane to come back right? and talk to us a little bit more about how to get a good fit. Diane, I'm fascinated to see what else you're going to teach us about getting those, that, getting that great fit. Well, I'm going to show you how to put the measurements into the computer and then a little bit about how the choices you make will change the patterns to give you a custom fit. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> the first picture we have here is a picture of a pattern making screen where you put the measurements in. That's what comes up on my computer this, screen. This okay. is what will come up on your computer screen. And when you click on the little box, a picture will appear showing you where to take the measurement. And then it will also give you a description in words how that measurement is taken. Um, so you can see here, right now, we're looking at the hip measurement with the picture and, and the little box is highlighted. But each one of these boxes, when you click in it, it will show you a different picture and you're able to type in the measurements. Mm -hmm. Then here on the bottom area, is where we define the silhouette of the body. The silhouette of, of the body is very important, where we define the shape of the buttocks and the shape of the abdomen, because the figure can go from very flat to very round on both the front and the back of the body. And the way that, the way that this will affect the pattern, let me, let's move on to the next picture here. Um, 
right now I'm at the at the two extremes. We've got a set of patterns, this is the back and this is the front, where we're looking at very round on the buttocks and very round on the abdomen. And then this set of patterns is very flat on the buttocks and very flat on the abdomen. Now if you compare the two patterns to each other, you'll see that the hip circumference across across the patterns is the same. And this little point right here is, is showing you where the hip line is. But you can see the difference in the shape of the side seam. See this, this side seam that is with the very flat buttocks and the very flat abdomen has more of a curve in it than, than the one this way. Now the best way to think about this is that if you consider a person with a very large hip circumference, let's, let's imagine an individual with like a 56 to a 60 hip circumference. And if you think in terms of them being very round in the back and very round on the front, the sides of the body are going to be flat. Okay, but they need that deep dart on the pattern piece in order to curve the fa the fabric around the tummy and around the derriere. Okay. 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 Whereas if they're very flat in the front, the flesh has to go someplace, and usually it goes to the sides of the body instead of the front and the back. If you're flat in the front and flat in the back, and so. You don't need as deep a dart to shape that pattern around the tummy. You need the shaping to come onto the side. Now let me ask you. In other words, when these measurements go in here and the computer knows what shape I am, those darts automatically come out of my computer. The, I don't have to the, worry no, about putting the, those darts. The darts will automatically come Again. out based on what your choices are in this chart That's for wonderful. the buttocks and the abdomen. That's wonderful. Now another extreme that we want to look at is where if, if you have a very flat buttocks and the very round abdomen versus the very round buttocks and the very flat abdomen. Um, the, the, the difference in the patterns, the width across the hip total combined is going to be the same from pattern to pattern. But you can see that on this version, the front portion is wider than the front portion is on this pattern. So what, what, that, what that alludes to is that the side seam is shifting on the body. See, okay. if you're carrying a lot of weight on the front and you're flat on the back, your side seam needs to be in a different location than if you're flat on the front and very round in the back. So this is what this is what the radio the choice of radio buttons will do is it will do that shift. The other thing that is very apparent with this picture is that if you have a flat dairy air versus a round dairy air, you you have a difference in the length of the crotch. Okay. Okay. okay? And that's that's this one. Now Let's move on to what the pattern making screen looks like. This is where we're going to take the choices okay. and make the choices of the pattern. You can do darts or elastic, make shorts or pants. We've got a choice of two or three darts um, and different shapes of crotch curves. And I want to focus on, on these two on the next pictures. First talk about the crotch curve. Now here on the crotch curve, not everybody's derriere is shaped exactly the same. Oh my goodness. <laughs> some people carry their weight low and some people carry their weight high in their profile. And so with the L-shaped crotch curve, this is for people who have more of a teardrop shape that carry their weight down low. This will cut out the pant and give them room for their derriere. On this other one, you see that's more of a flat crotch shape. What this does is that for a person who carries their weight high and their fanny is flat, okay. this brings the material into their into the derriere to fit better. Okay. Okay. In the next picture that we have, we're showing a 38 inch hip versus a 60 inch hip. And this is where the dart combinations come, come into play for whether you choose two darts or three darts. An individual who has an expanse of fabric across the back of the body is going to need more darts to control the fabric to make a nice curve across the back. Now. Let's, let's, we are running a little short on time and I really want you to show these waistlines. Okay. Okay, okay let me get this first. Uh, this is my favorite right here. <laughs> you don't have to put any darts in those, do you? No, this is this is the the pants with the elastic waist, and and basically this is this is sewn on, um, and the elastic is threaded through the waistband. Okay. And what about this one? This one, you saw how we had two darts in the front and two darts in the back. We've okay. taken out one dart in the front, one in the back to give us just a little bit of of elastic in it, and we've inserted a zipper so that it's not quite as much gather. Okay. This one, we've put a fly front, and that gives a... It has two darts in the And it one. has okay. two darts in the front and two in the back, but we've put a waistband without any elastic on it. And then on these, we put the zipper into the back of the pant, 
and we've actually lined these. They're wool pants and we lined them with silk and, um, and these pants have the, the fitted waistband as well. Oh, Diane, this was fascinating to me and I, I especially love the fact that your computer does all of this on little eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and I tape it together and get pants that fit like this. That's what I love about it. <laughs> and now let's see, Lisa has been sewing for us. So let's see these perfect fit pants that she made. Yes, believe it or not, in 12 minutes. Lisa has now finished sewing the pants in 12 minutes. Diane is wearing them. Lisa, talk to us a little bit about these perfect pants. I'd be happy to. We've got Diane back on this most wonderful pair of pants. As you can see, we've got a stitched on waistband. We're going to explain to you in just a little bit why we've done it that way. If she'll turn to the back, you can see how perfectly they fit from the front, the back, and the side. The crotch is actually where it's supposed to be, not hanging down to your knees. And if you'll take a look at our board here, we'll explain just a little bit further about what we've done with this pattern. As you can see here, this waistline is actually tilted. Most of us are tilted to some degree. What that means is that our center front length to floor and our center back length to floor is slightly different. We're not straight across, most of us. If you chose to actually sew your pants with the waistline like this, you would end up with a crotch that's down to your knees. <sighs> not attractive and this is very uncomfortable right. um, for this reason we don't take a crotch length measurement when we take our measurements some of you may have noticed that we took our center front length to the floor right here and our center back length to the floor and then we shaped the waistline accordingly so that that pair of pants is exactly where it's supposed and to be and that's why you have to put the separate waistband on that's exactly rather right than just folding them down right. and running elastic you would not be able to sew elastic put in a casing on in this manner and okay. turn it down and sew it. This would not work whatsoever. Well, these are so fascinating to me. They fit beautifully. The ones mm -hmm. I have on fit beautifully. And they're right. so comfortable when they fit right. They are. And I love the fact that it only takes 12 minutes to make it. I would like to thank both of you for coming you're and, and being that you're just such informative and, and just absolutely fabulous. And I, I'm so excited about these computer generated patterns Great. that really fit. Thank you. And next, I would like to share a really, really pretty home decorating project with you. This little quilt is called Welcome to the Family Quilt. As you can see, it has wonderful Madeira applique hearts all over it. And in each one of those hearts are names of the family. For instance, Aunt Erica and Uncle Roger, Aunt Gail and Uncle Damon. This quilt was made for a little girl named Allison. And all over this quilt are members of the family. It's been stitched in with machine stitching. Over here again, Uncle G Aunt Gail and Uncle Damon. And this little heart says Mimi. One of the things I like especially about this quilt is the little piece of sashing over here on the edge, which looks as if you have one, two, three, four, just tiny, tiny little pieces of quilting fabric stitched together. And by the way, they use the colors of yellow and pink from the little uh, quilting fabrics on the little hearts. Now that is really easy to make, although it looks like it's very complicated to make. Let's see how that sashing is made. Stitch one, two, three, four, five, or however many uh, colors you want to use of fabric, long strips, stitch them together. Then it's all stitched together in one strip. Then take your rotary cutter and slice little strips. And you see, it looks like you've had all those tiny little strips uh, stitched together, but you didn't. That was easy to do. And then put all of the strips together into one long sashing piece. And I think that's one of the most adorable sashing uh, treatments I have ever seen. Now those little Madeira hearts are really easy to make. Lots of fun and easy to make too. Since I have several size hearts on the quilt, I will make several sizes of patterns. That's my little pattern made, by the way, out of an old envelope that was ready to be thrown away. So we re try to recycle as much as we can. I stitch the heart, pa excuse me, I trace the heart pattern onto the fusible interfacing. Then I put the fusible interfacing right sides together on the uh, quilting fabric. Next, I'm going to straight stitch all the way around the heart, all the way around, joining the fusible interfacing in the quilting fabric. And then I cut a slice in the middle. I cut a slice in the middle and turn it right side out. Now, if you need to clip the curves, you can, but I don't think we're gonna need to on a heart this big. Okay, I turn it right side out and get it all, finger press it and get it just perfect. Then I put your, the heart 
onto my base fabric and in order to keep it in place I will go ahead and fuse it. I will go ahead because the fusible interfacing is right there so I'll go ahead and press it. And next I'm going to do a little Madeira applique or a blanket stitch to attach it to my quilt. Okay. I love the Madeira applique, or the, actually this is a, little, a blanket stitch. It's a little bit bigger than the Madeira applique stitch, or a little bit, a little bit different. But isn't that sweet? And we're going to use this blanket stitch to stitch and stitch and stitch. I'm going, to, I'm going kind of slowly here, so I will not go in the wrong place. Actually, I'm using a regular needle, not a wing needle. Okay. And I am again, I'm going slowly, so I will go exactly along the edge of this little Madeira applique heart. Can you see how pretty that is? It looks like I've spent hours doing hand blanket stitching. Guess what? It all is right here in the sewing machine. And then, now before I actually um, put this fabric down, I would have gone ahead and stitched the family names onto this fabric, and I would need to be sure I got the heart placed in exactly the right direction. And that is all there is to making this wonderful little welcome to the family quilt. And now won't you join me in my attic? This is a perfectly magnificent blouse. Wonderful details. The, the high neck, and by the way, this would have been at least no, no later than about 1900. Do you see the beautiful details on this neck? It has several different, several rows of, of French insertion and then edging around the top. But what is really magnificent about this blouse is the beautiful hand embroidery and the shaped squares on either side and this wonderful embroidery in the middle which comes down into a V and has a beautiful lace miter. I I also love the use of tiny, tiny baby pin tucks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then more pin tucks in the middle. And by the way, something real interesting, this blouse needed some repairs, so we went in behind these two sections and put um, and put a netting, which you really can't see that's been repaired, but that gave it some extra strength. The sleeves on this blouse are perfectly magnificent also. They have rows of, of pin tucks and then a beautiful lace shaping on down on the bottom of the sleeve. As you know, the backs of these blouses are very, very beautiful also. And there, here you see the wonderful little buttons, little tiny uh, crocheted buttons. And then here are the little tucks and the insertion that goes all the way down. I just truly marvel at the, ladies only had a straight stitch sewing machine when they made blouses like this. I have, for sewing from the heart today, I have a letter here from Frances Stewart. She says, and she by the way is from um, Shreveport, Louisiana. Dear Martha, I would like to tell you about our group, the Red River Quilters of Shreveport, Louisiana. These are the things we have been involved with over the last several years. Quilts for blind children are one of the projects that we have. We make these quilts out of a textured material so that blind children can overcome their fears of the unknown. We also make ABC quilts for the national organization and quilts for our local needy and abused children. We also make layettes for needy children and burial gowns for premature babies. Our group has recently won the group award from the Celebration of Women Week and we were named as women who have made a difference. I would love seeing our group mentioned on your program. Thanks so much for all you do, and may God bless and keep you and yours. Frances Stewart, and it's so cute. Frances spells her name F-R-A-N-C-I-S, and she puts there, I am a woman named after my grandmother who spelled her name with an I instead of an E. Frances, I would like to thank you so much for all the work that you and the Red River Quilters of Shreveport, Louisiana are doing, making life a better place. I want to thank all of you for coming to my sewing room today, and I'd like to invite you back next time.